In a world plagued by reboots, haunted by sequels, dominated by the same old shit. Get ready for an original podcast that will gouge out your eyeballs and skull fuck you. Starring Ginger Josh, Adam the Hare, and introducing the immortal Frank. Hold on to your butts. It's the Game Rage Movies TV Podcast. Welcome back again. A new episode of Game Rage Movies and TV. My name is Josh. I'm here today with my good buddy, Adam. Good buddy. Yes. Greetings. Hello. Salutations. And uh, before we get into it, obviously today we're going to be doing this Severance. We're going to be doing episode season one, episode three, and we are doing obviously season one of Severance in anticipation of the new season, which will be dropping January 2025. Or, yeah, it's because it's 2024. Yeah, It'll be whatever. Releasing we're releasing imminently. So we should be done with this and ready to go for Severance, and we should be doing Severance on the weekly basis as they come out you for know, season two. You know what you shouldn't be severed from? Game, Game Rage, Rage Magazine. Magazine. Yeah. That's true. And if you want to not be severed from Game Rage Magazine, you can follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Game Rage Magazine, Twitter slash X at Game Rage Mag. The best place to fight the man. I did hear that someone said that... If you listen to Game Rage Magazine, you are 75% more likely to be on a government watch list. Ooh, I, have, I heard a, another amazing statistic. What's that? You are 18% more likely to drop a deuce and only pinch off once. A clean fucking deuce and you only wipe once, dude. Dang, by listening to Game Rage Magazine on YouTube while you're shitting. Yeah. You are 18% more likely to have a no wipe shit. That's that. That's not even with adding any fiber to your fucking diet. No, right that's there. just listening to us while you're taking a shit on YouTube. Game Rage Magazine, plain and simple. Pinching one off, Pinching, clean. Yeah, oh, clean. Just the way we like it. Getting clean. And if you go like music, go listen to Adam at All Gas No Trash Official on Instagram, and listen to the All Gas No Trash podcast. If you like animes and mangas, follow Frank at Anime Underscore Syndicate Underscore Podcast, and go and listen to the Anime Syndicate Podcast. All right, let's get into it. Severance. Severance. Episode number three. Yeah, this is where shit's getting yeah. real, real uh, sketchy as far as uh, Lumen goes. Yes, we're starting to get the big picture here. We're starting to get more revealed to us as sort of how Lumen operates. The subsidized housing from fucking yeah. Lumen, where you're basically giving, hou- giving housing like some kind of communist... Bullshit. It is. This is like a corp. I think I said this to you. This is like what people would imagine or what I imagine people who love communism would think that like this is like a perfect corpo communist society right here. That's like Lumen is building. Everything is provided. Yep. No one owns anything. No one owns anything. You don't uh, even know what you're doing when you're at work. You're just you're just a mindless drone. Yeah. There, you start. It's, it's crazy that this show is capable <laughs> of creating sympathy for seemingly two different people but functionally are one person same yeah it uh, is it is crazy uh so again we are introduced with Heliar making many attempts to <laughs> get Escape. out of the fucking matrix yeah so to speak or rather the severance space being below the elevator or the heading down to basically hell um and I don't, I don't mean that literally, but corp, corporation hell. Corporate hell. Uh, so she sends in a submit, or rather a submission or request to end her time at the archives on the surface level and yeah. rather the data refinement in in the uh, below level. Yeah. Uh, so she sends in her request and it is said that her... Audi denies that request and she's basically stuck there and one of the things that was funny too is uh, Mark says when he's reading he's like oh I've never I've never seen a a, a, what was it a resignation request get answered so quickly and then he's like "Uh, yeah it was denied by the way (laughs) she's just like and it was funny because like everything is like a goddamn 
It's this is corporate hell. Everything they do that's like a first, it's like, oh, we need to take pictures so we can put it in the fucking yearbook or whatever. Milicek is in there. He's like, hey, it's your first uh, morning announcements as department head. And he's like, oh, oh. And so then he's like reading it. And then he's like, Pew! he's getting up in his grill taking pictures and shit. And I'm like, goddamn. And it is funny how everything is like 1960s or 70s era technology, maybe even 80s. Like the computers, that fucking camera, like the, nope. the rolling TVs with the VHS tapes and shit. Um, that's interesting to me how that's the motif that they go for on the inside of the severed thing. Because that's not, you don't see that anywhere else. Like everything obviously outside is like modern, you know, they all have flat screen TVs. They have like, you know. Yeah, well, I imagine it's like, it's like fucking North Korea. Yeah. <laughs> they have primitive technology, so they can't educate themselves or retaliate. They can't educate. Uh, yeah, so uh, a lot of cool things happened. Um, so we have Heliar still retaliating and then getting reprimanded by Milchek, who uh, eventually asks her to recite these words that my personal theory. So Dylan proposes that, or rather, within the same episode itself, Pete points out that uh, the data refinement, the micro data refinement is uh, killing people. We don't know in what capacity, but that's what he allegedly remembers. Yeah. And he also has inklings about how the layout of the floor itself is arranged, and he's trying to share that with Mark in his basement. And uh, at the same time, Pete is like, having mental fucking episodes where he's jumping in and out of his any and outy self. Yeah. It's fucking wild shit. It is wild shit. Uh, mean, in the meantime, one of the interesting wrinkles, which I kind of personally theorized, was that there are figures, and Milchek was kind of the tipping, the person that kind of tipped it off, is that, well, this motherfucker is capable of preserving himself in the above and below, or maybe he's just brainwashed. He doesn't even know who the, fuck, who the fuck he is. But at the very least, Miss Cobell and Selvig, the, the, the same person, but two different people, that is just a geist that she wears to monitor or spy on Mark. Uh, or at least that's my impression. Which is crazy, because what the fuck is so important with Mark? He's like seemingly like nobody. Yeah. So why are they going through this much trouble? Because she's been his neighbor for like ever. True. So what the fuck is the point of that? And, and <clears throat> um, also... Uh, that point is highlighted when she goes into, she breaks into his house basically when uh, his brother, his sister, Mark's sister and her brother-in-law or her husband, so his brother-in-law, they come to drop off a package and he's like, oh, oh, is it perfect? Is, should I leave it this way? Should I do it this way? Oh, oh, I don't And then we find out later that it's 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 his new book or whatever. He's like a Tony he's, Robbins yeah, motherfucker. Yeah, like a self-help fucking guy. And he wrote this new book or whatever. The you that you are. Yeah, and he and he wanted to give it to him. And she he's like, oh, do you think he's going to be excited? Oh, yeah, he's going to be real excited. Like, <laughs> I would be like, I would throw that in the trash. Like, I'd, I'd probably get the severance process done Just, twice. Yeah. <laughs> can I have a, another severance done so I can forget this fucking thing? Yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, but then after that happens, she go, Cobell or Selvig, Cobell slash Selvig goes up to the door, fucking just takes the package and just... It has a key to his goddamn house and just fucking opens it up and starts walking around. And then she gets a call, seemingly from, from someone from the office, says there's a problem. Obviously, it was the Helly R situation, more than likely. And so uh, Petey's down there in the basement, and he's like, oh, shit. I got to get out of here, He there, sees bro. her, and he, like, remembers who she is. And he's like, oh, I got to get the fuck out of here. So then he goes off onto a side quest of, like, madness and just is like rent like he starts thinking he's in the hallway and he's walking i thought he was gonna kill himself or some shit because it was like that little sequence where he, was, he shows up on the bridge i was like oh are they like fucking with his head and getting him because they can't find him as we find out later that they don't know where he is and so they're like oh well, mark doesn't know where well, he is well no the company lumen doesn't know where he is oh also the uh <clears throat> what was the the something mind collective yeah it's some fucking organization that's like some terrorist group it seems like or some group that's trying to get people out of lumen yeah or if they don't want to be severed anymore <laughs> yeah uh and pete so in the course of the subplot between pete and mark mark is like 
I'm dialed in, bro. I'm locked in. I'm a fucking mark for Lumen. Oh, yeah. So the, the thing I'm not really particularly clear on is that there are like subconscious level manipulation. So this guy is doing this process, right? Yeah. And he's his independent self, like his Audi out on the thing. But why is it that he's in this setting, the, the Lumen setting, like the sever, the below level? Why is he still like shilling for them if he's severed, you know? Well, because he thinks it's helping him. He thinks that like for eight to 12 hours of the day. He doesn't have to think about his dead, dead wife. wife. He doesn't have to do any of that shit. Yeah. And he gets to just come out. But see, then that's the other thing. If, it, if it's like this, it's like this temporal fucking dilation. Like if you don't know that the time is happening, mm. you walk in there and then you walk out and what you have like maybe four or five hours to yourself and then you got to go to sleep and then you go to sleep because you've been up all day and like you're tired or whatever. So like, and then you're just going to be asleep all night and then you wake up, you're up for like an hour or two. So out of the fucking 24 hours in the day, you're really only awake for like maybe eight. True. And then. But isn't that like a hell in and of itself? It is because even I guess the alternative is is like maybe just killing yourself to get out of the the feelings. But like that's true. This seems worse. Like I I don't know, man. It's very strange. It 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 is true. I mean, considering that Mark has these episodes because he had like a mental breakdown before going to work. Yeah, and some I think Irving pointed out that he's like, well, dude, you whatever your Audi does with your body that reciprocate or rather that. Uh, affects you personally because you're the same person. Yeah, the they fi- said that. Oh, you always come in. You always come in with your eyes uh, red. So we fig- we we just uh, made up a thing that you have an elevator. It must be an elevator allergy. <laughs> oh, and he lost weight, so it's yeah. like the alcoholism's fucking getting to him. But uh, regarding the subplot with Pete, what we got out of it was he's mapping out the area. He's having these flashbacks about working at Lumen and shit. Uh, and then consequentially, because he's been able to map out, uh, what he, he believes is the floor of Lumen, the lower level that this ends up playing a role with the pictures, uh, that they were supposed to be replacing all the members or rather all the pictures that are displayed on the desk. I'm imagining Pete, Pete's fucking picture his frame is the one that had the, because that's what end, what ends up happening is that yeah. there, there's like an entire thing fucking laid out and Mark's any discovers this uh, as he replaces all the photos and everything. Yeah, the map or uh, the alleged map of the interior of the complex. Right. So uh, as, as we were saying before, Heli gets reprimanded and she just has like this, it's been consistently portrayed that she is rebellious Every opportunity she has, I mean, she drew shit on her arms to, which was very smart that she put out the word get out or whatever the fuck it was in two different segments. So when you take it off, it doesn't look like anything. Right. Yeah. Um, And then she ends up trying to escape through the hall, through the hallways, and she ends up at the exit, but cuts her arm. And then that's where she gets reprimanded by Milchek and then the government guy, the the G-man or whatever the fuck. What was really cool about what she was doing Mm -hmm. Is she remembered that when you walk out that door, mm-hmm. you get severed and you go back to your normal self. Mm-hmm. So she was trying to get it so that she would sever and her fucking severed self would see her holding this note and be like, what the fuck? And then be like, let me out. Yeah, just just uh, just for the split second that she yeah. could maybe remember it on the other side. Which is fucking that's that's very crazy. Like, yeah. Um, um, and then we got to get to the heart of the episode itself, which is, oh, you. Y- you're you're just acting crazy because you haven't been programmed because that's what this fuck it is. You're yeah, getting brainwashed into yeah. buying all this uh, lumen bullshit. So they they take her to this. Uh, I forgot it was the like, perpetuity wing. The perpetuity wing. Well, before they take her there, they have this idea to go do this to take her there when she comes back from getting fucking in trouble or whatever in the the timeout room or whatever the fuck. The break and they also room. have like a bingo game going on too. Well, yeah, yeah. So okay, so before that though. Mark goes to talk to Cobell and he's like, he goes to see Milchek and he's like, hey, it's Co-, and, and he's, Milchek has the book on the desk that and he's like, oh shit. And so he flips it over so he can't see what it is. 
Because I don't know if that will trigger, if they see anything from like their outside life, it will trigger some shit or whatever. So his brother-in-law's picture is on the book cover. So like he flips it over and he's like, oh, I wanted to speak to Miss Cobell, blah, 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 whatever. And he's like, uh, did you fill out the request form for the, for the, the request form for management interaction is what it fucking says. He's like, well, no, I thought that, you know, and then she says, oh, it's fine. So she goes, he goes in there and she's telling that their interaction was fucking very, it was, it was literally it's corporate hell. Right. But it was very like much that brainwash type. Cause she is, is very much like, no, Oh, you want to go to the, why do you want to do this? And he's like, well, Irving suggested, and she's like, oh, that's funny. I didn't know I made Irving the department head. Yeah. And he's like, well, I mean, I suggested it. And she's like, hmm, did you fill out the uh, interdepartmental uh, walk request form? And he's like, uh, no, I didn't. <sighs> and then she's just like, you know what? Fine, whatever, go. And then she's like, are you going to make me fucking throw my mug at you? And he's like, huh? And then she's like, she just chucked the fucking mug at him. And then she says... She calms down and she goes, now, Mark, that was very painful for me to do to you, but I want you to know that it was because I care about you and I hope that you learn from this experience. And then he's just like, okay. And then, <laughs> and then she, he's going to leave and she, he's like, uh, do you want the door open or closed? And she just goes, both. And he's like, the fuck? I, what? Yeah, he's like, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go. And then he just leaves. <laughs> And so then, as oh good. Oh, well, one other thing. So uh, Miss Cobell has like a, a board meet or meeting with the board yes. of supervisors or whatever. And they don't. They so up until this point, we don't even know who the fuck they are. They never say anything. So they have their their assistant sent in to mediate this conversation between Miss Cobell and the fucking board of supervisors. And as much as Miss Cobell is a fucking. Uh, Mark is a whipping boy to fucking Miss Cobell. Miss Cobell is a fucking whipping whip- boy to the board. Yeah. And what's funny is it's how they have the speaker that's there and yeah. it's just making this crackling noise. And then the chick, I forget what her name is, she has this little headpiece in and she is speaking on behalf of the board. And so then they're both just sitting there and she's just like smiling and staring at her and staring. And then she says, Oh, the board would like you to speak first. And then she goes, like, Oh. Okay, uh, salutations, and then... Salutations, yeah. <laughs> and then she waits, and she's like... Uh, and then she's like... So then she does tell them that the search for fucking Petey... Still go- is ongoing. still ongoing. And she also says that there are indications that he may have been unsevered. Yep. And they basically say, like, well, that's not possible. And she's like, well, listen, I'm just telling you. And then they fucking disconnect the call and hang up on her. And then that other chick's like, oh, because she's in the middle of explaining this. And she's like, management has disconnected the call. And then she just gets up and fucking walks out. And there was like seemingly this illusion that there was, you know, like something of a rapport between the two. Right. But there there really wasn't. wasn't, Yeah. Yeah. But uh, that shit was funny. (laughs) That was funny. And so then anyway, so then they start going to the perpetuity wing. And so as they're walking there, Irving is giving this like whole diatribe about the whole fucking thing and all this stuff. And so about how the the perpetuity wing is just so refreshing and it's just so it provides perspective and And meaning and purpose and all this shit. And so they're talking to each other about, oh, look, we have fucking uh, perpetuity wing bingo or whatever. And then they're going to do. The, 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 the Egan's. The Egan, Egan bingo or whatever. So then, uh, while they're walking there, what's his name? Uh, they run into the Bert. O&D people, Bert, and the other lady. The, his on, on, the way, on the way to the perpetuity wing. On the way to the yeah. perpetuity wing. And they have this interaction where Irving is fucking in, in love with Bert. Like, and Bert is also seemingly in love with him. Like, this was literally love at first sight, man. I love, dude, Dylan, I... Th- I, I initially hated him. <laughs> yeah, but he's a great character, man. He's fucking great because he like just buys into any conspiracy theory, especially about O and D. Oh yeah, the optics and design that they they started a coup, and that's why they're all separated from one another, and that's why there's only fucking two. And he hates them. So like the second they see him, he goes, "Hey, what the fuck are you doing out of your cage?" And they're like, "Whoa!" And then he's like, "Oh, you two fucking know each other?" And he's like, "Oh yeah, we met when we were going for this and that." And he's like, "Oh okay, huh?" And they're like, he's like, huh, Bert, you might want to come down sometime and see, you know, see us or whatever. And yeah, then he's, he's like, 
okay. And then they were like, he's like, what the fuck are you two doing here? And he's like, oh, we're just walking back from a team building exercise. She got all these broken eggs. And she was like, oh yeah, it was uh, egg carrying or some shit. And he's like, huh. He's like, your eggs are shitty. <laughs> and then they just fucking leave. And then he's, and then that's when they give the backstory about how there was this alleged coup and that that's why there's only two O&D people yeah. because they tried to overthrow this whole thing. And um, we do get a little insight into... I don't remember where they say this at, but I think it's very interesting that in this episode, we did get a little thing where they were talking about the types of personalities that are in each department. And each department has, I forget what theirs, M MDR was like uh, compassion and like um, intelligence. And then like uh, O&D was like the anger and like the cunning or something like that. Yeah, it was like <clears throat> cunning, fucking, well, I, I can't remember exactly, frolic malice. Yeah, it was like, that's what that was the whole thing that they were like, that each department is separated by like the personality traits of the individuals, right? And so I thought that was very interesting. And to say that basically O&D did pull off some sort of coup and that's why there's only two of them because they said, oh no, they can't be four of them. They can only have two of them so that they don't get too many numbers. <laughs> And take over the fucking place. It's like the Myers Briggs thing. Like you're being yeah. assigned a fucking thing by the Myers. Well, their their version of like the Myers Briggs shit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so then, uh, as they're walking through to they get they get to the perpetuity wing, and then we get this fucking the current CEO has this fucking lifelike Keir, wax doll, Cure Egan. Yeah, Cure Cure Egan. And they also go to his house, or rather, the first Egan I think was yeah like 1886 or something. Right. So this yeah. is dating all the way back to. Uh, like 200 years at this point or 100 and some plus years. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, you were saying. So anyway, so they go in there and he's in Irving is explaining all this, the, the backstory the of everything, the lore of Lumen because he is a straight Lumen Mark. Oh yeah. And uh, they're going, he's going on about how this and that and he goes on to talk about each CEO and how like they all have a fucking statue here of all the past CEOs he talks about the one who was like the woman CEO and like, oh, th no one said she when she was six years old, she told her father, I will be the CEO one day. And then here she is being this first woman CEO. And then, you know, he's going on and going on about that. And then he goes into their, the house. Right. And there's this thing where like on the bingo card, it's like sit on the bed is like one of the things. And so Mark is like he goes he's like looking around and he goes <laughs> and, sit on it. and then Irving just goes. Mm, what 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 are you doing? I, uh, I I do believe you were trying to sit on the bed. That is not allowed no. per the regulations. Like no, <laughs> yeah, no, I would <laughs> no, uh, no. You were trying to sit on the bed, and oh, then as yeah. they're arguing about this, Helly R has disappeared. Yep, and, and that's when she goes on her little trail yeah. and and uh, tries to tries to break through the thing and then yeah. show herself, and then that's when we get to see her put into the room. With Milchek, and she's trying to read. She's reading the statement, and she's like, "He's like, read the statement." And she's like, "I don't wanna." And then she, I'm he's like, convinced. "Yeah, read the statement." And so she goes, "Okay." She reads it, and he goes again, and she's like, "I don't want to do it." And he's like, "I'm again until I'm convinced or whatever." And then, so basically, they make you say this statement until you mean it, essentially. Which, goddamn, that's crazy. My theory is that. If Lumi gets pinned for something in, in, in the public eye, yeah. but they have a fall person. Anybody who's ever gotten in trouble inside there that has read these, they, 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 they can just, yeah. That, yeah, that's. You pick any one of them and bam, there yeah, you go. You, for all, for any purpose and all purposes, you get to be plugged in for taking yeah. fault. And then uh, after that, we get, <laughs> uh, we go back to Petey and he's in the some convenience store. Nose fucking bleeding all over the place. He's talking about how he needs tokens to buy the things. That, he's that's, like, what, that's what's fucking sad is that you can't, you have to, well, I guess technically on in, in the real world, you also have to earn your means, earn your means to pay for food. Yeah. But this is more pathetic because this is like lab rats, like yeah. in a fucking maze, getting, pressing on something to get like their little. The water, the yeah, food. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's fucked up. And so then the convenience store lady's like, the hell are you talking about? And then she, <laughs> and then she goes over there and sees his, and then he's like, oh, and then he like fucks off. And then they call the ambulance. Obviously, Mark is, he's going back home or whatever. And then he sees Petey out there. And then he's like, he basically just like dies in front of him. And then he's like, oh shit, I gotta go. And he's running back home to try to fucking get rid of all the shit that it was there. And that's like kind of how the episode ends is his phone rings. That phone that he had starts ringing. Pete's, and the, Pete's, Pete's phone. phone. Yeah, it rings. And he's like, 
oh shit, you're like, is he gonna answer that? The mind, then, the mind collective. Yeah, and then that's and then the episode ends. But there was one little interaction that I forgot to talk about. And it, this is like just to show Irving and Bert, like or not Bert, uh, Irving and uh, the fat guy. Goddamn, what's his name? Dylan. Dylan. They are like the two of the best characters, and they're essentially polar opposites almost. And so what's funny is Dylan's talking about how he's like, you know, he's like, man, he's like, my delts are insane today. <laughs> and then he's saying all this shit, and he's and it's funny because he's a fat guy, and he's like, yeah, man. He's like, you know what? I think my Audi does muscle shows. And then he's like, yeah, yeah. And then and then Irving tells him, hmm, well, if he does muscle shows, why would you need to work here? And he's like, oh, you know, because muscle shows don't pay that well. He's like, how would you know? And he's like, well, I mean, I don't. We're just, you know, guessing. But he's like, you know, look at these delts, man. He's like, probably best delts get like 20 bucks. And he's like, you know, best <laughs> traps get like 30. And he's like, biceps, that's the flashy one. So that's probably like 50 bucks or whatever. And then he's like, hmm, like, but I thought that was a funny ass little interaction between the two of them. Yeah, he's a weird fuck. Yeah, it, it, it was funny. So. Yeah, I think uh, he's definitely becoming. As far as like comedic relief goes, he's like he's, he's, the, he's fucking it. Yeah. He is the comedic relief, and he is right now probably like my favorite character. Yeah. So yeah, this is the show's been rather. Um, I will say, I hate the fucking score. Like I've basically been brainwashed. <laughs> I could hear the fucking theme song in my head because yeah. it's so awful. The yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's the point of it. Yeah. It's, it's so, so bad, irritating. It's yeah. so irritating. Yeah. You can't forget it. Uh. Another banger of an issue, and then we have another five, no, rather six episodes yeah. to get through to wrap this shit up, and then peaking our way towards uh, season two, which I'm sure is just going to be just as nuts. Oh, yeah, I'm sure it's going to be even fucking worse, which will be great. So, anyways, all right, you got anything else to add? No. Cool, that'll be it. If you want to follow us, you can follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Game Rage Magazine. Go listen to, or go to Twitter slash X Game Rage Mag. Do yourself a favor, do us a favor, and go to Game Rage Magazine on YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. YouTube and listen there. Everything's there. Everything. It's so easily identifiable and organized. It's great. And give us a like, comment, and subscribe. Like, comment, and subscribe on that bullshit. Also, if you like music, go listen to All Gas No Trash, and you can follow Adam at All Gas No Trash Official. And additionally, if you like the animes and mangas, you can go listen to the Anime Syndicate podcast and follow Frank on Instagram at anime underscore syndicate underscore podcast. And that'll be. That'll be it. And if you don't comply, we're going to have you read a prepared statement. Oh, yeah. We're going to send you to the break room <laughs> and read you a prepared statement until we are convinced that you mean it. Yes. Oh, hey there, buddy. It's me, 1930s announcer guy. Here to congratulate you on making it through this episode. As our heroes are getting in their jalopies and riding off into the literal sunset, they wanted me to tell you thanks for listening to their radio broadcast. And should you be so kind as to follow them on some fancy schmancy radio station publication called Instagram and TikTok at Game Range Magazine, and on some other thing called Twitter slash X at Game Range Mag. Also, they uh, wanted me to inform you and ask if you could be so kind again as to uh, visit something called the website at www.gameragemagazine.com. I don't know what that is, buddy, but uh, you should probably go do those things. And, you know, don't forget to tune in next time to the Game Rage Movies and TV Radio Broadcast.